This video focuses on the behavior of functions and their graphs as x goes through arbitrarily large positive or negative values. You probably touched on these ideas in the past when you learned about horizontal asymptotes. In this video, we'll address the same idea as horizontal asymptotes, but we'll use the language of limits. In our first example here, what happens to our function f of x as x goes through larger and larger positive numbers? Well, the arrow here in the end is supposed to mean that the trend continues. So as x gets larger and larger, f of x is getting closer and closer to the value of 1. We can write this as the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals 1. x goes to infinity here means that x is getting larger and larger through positive values. Now what about when x goes through larger and larger negative values, like negative 5, negative 10, negative a million, and so on? Well, assuming this trend continues, it looks like f of x, even though it's oscillating, is settling down at a value of 2. So we write that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals 2. x goes to negative infinity here means that x is going through negative numbers that are larger and larger in magnitude. Limits in which x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity are called limits at infinity. This terminology should be contrasted with the terminology infinite limits, which is a limit that has a value of infinity like the limit, for example, as x goes to 0 of 1 over x squared, which has a value of infinity. So these two expressions do not mean the same thing. So how are limits at infinity related to asymptotes? Well, limit at infinity is pretty much the same thing as a horizontal asymptote. f of x has a horizontal asymptote at x equals l, means that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals l, or possibly that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is l, or both, as you can see in the example above. Infinite limits, on the other hand, correspond to vertical asymptotes. Let's figure out the limits in infinity for these two functions, g of x and h of x. The first function, g of x, which is actually the function y equals e to the minus x, has a horizontal asymptote heading right here at y equals 0. So therefore, the limit as x goes to infinity of g, to g of x equals 0. When we look on the left, though, g our function doesn't settle down at any particular value. It keeps going up and up in an unbounded fashion. Because g of x eventually grows larger than any finite number, we say that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x is infinity. Next, let's look at y equals h of x. Please pause the video for a moment and try to figure out the limits at infinity for this function. The limit as x goes to infinity of h of x is negative infinity because h of x eventually gets below or more negative than any finite number as x goes to infinity. What about the limit as x goes to minus infinity? Because h of x oscillates and never settles down, we can't pick a single limit that h of x gets closer and closer to as x goes to negative infinity. So we have to write that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of h of x does not exist. This example makes me want to show you another example where there's both oscillation and getting arbitrarily large at the same time. This function is actually f of x equals x plus sine of 5x. Now what would you say about the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity? Can we say that the limit equals infinity? Or can we just say the limit does not exist due to the oscillation? Please think about it and bring your ideas to class. Finally, let's look at the limits at infinity for some functions without looking at the graphs first. To find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, Let's think about what happens as x gets bigger and bigger through positive numbers. As x gets bigger and bigger, 1 over x gets smaller and smaller. So the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x equals 0. 
To find the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x, let's look at what happens as x goes through numbers that are negative but larger and larger in magnitude. Now 1 over x goes through numbers that are negative, but they're still smaller and smaller in magnitude. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x is also equal to 0. We can use similar reasoning to find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x cubed. As x goes to infinity, x cubed also goes to infinity. So 1 over x cubed has to go to 0. To find the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of x, notice that as x goes to infinity, square root of x still goes to infinity, so 1 over the square root of x also has to go to 0. In other words, both of these limits are equal to 0. These two examples are actually closely related because 1 over x cubed and 1 over the square root of x are both of the form 1 over x to the r, where r is a number greater than 0. For the square root example, we notice that 1 over the square root of x is 1 over x to the 1 half. And in general, the limit as x goes to infinity of anything of the form 1 over r is going to be 0, where r is a number that's positive. In fact, the same thing is even true for the limit as x goes to negative infinity, as long as you avoid exponents like 1 half that don't make sense for negative numbers. In this video, we've looked at limits as x goes to infinity and negative infinity, and looked at some graphical examples. In a separate video, we'll compute limits in infinity using algebraic techniques.